Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. I've been hard at it on the Ultimate Crew Cab there, getting things mocked up for final assembly before we tear it all back apart for paint and uh, body work. So let me go fill you guys in with what I've been doing. All right guys, like I said, I've been hard at it on this thing. Uh, mainly been working up here in the engine compartment, but I did get the cab set back down on the frame and all bolted together uh, and everything still fits, so that's good. Um, got the uh, the course port up and the uh, the actual inner fenders that I'm going to be using I do I did have to trim uh, this one you can see right here I had to trim it here and all the way up to here and then went down under there just to give it some more clearance with this uh, frame rail here um, the other one fit perfect but uh, this one I did have to do just a little bit of trimming but I mean really not much in the grand scheme of things I've also been uh, routing the wiring um, uh, getting everything sorted around here and figuring out where it's going to go as you can see I have it kind of strung loosely around the core support here and uh, I also fabricated a stainless box that the uh, PCM is going to be housed in and then I recessed that into the inner fender uh, w without doing that that PCM is rather large and it was sticking all the way out uh, towards the engine right here and uh, didn't really give much room for the plugs and it just be it feel a little cluttered I think so uh, I recessed it back in the inner fender and butted up against the, the back edge here. So that kind of keeps it, um, uh, yeah, get it out of the uh, the way, kind of. If you can see it down under here. Yeah, see, it's it just butted up right there. But uh, it's just in there loosely right now. Um, I was originally going to weld it, but uh, these are some really old um, uh, galvanized inner fenders. I'm not sure. They're, they're like uh, 20 years old now, um, some old ones I had. And uh, I'm not sure if the new ones are galvanized. I guess they might be. I'm not real sure. But it, the ones I've got, it seems like they're just bare metal. Um, but uh, these sure, sure seem to be, like, really galvanized. I've never tried to weld on the other one, so I don't know. But it would be a pain to weld is what I'm saying because they're galvanized. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, some bolts through the bottom here and bolt this down. And then I'll after I get everything painted, I'll come in here and seal this up just so the water and stuff doesn't come up and seep through there and get caught in between that and the the box here but i think that'll work pretty good and uh, we'll avoid uh trying to weld to this stuff because it's probably not going to be that pleasant to weld with um i have the radiator out right now i'll probably show you that at some point but uh my uh, uh radiator i'm using uh six liter radiator uh off of a six liter power stroke um we fitted this up on the uh, uh the channel back in the fall when i was originally putting the the truck on the chassis but that is a uh, a three core radiator where the factory six liter radiator is only a two core radiator so it's a lot thicker so it's going to have a lot better cooling capacity but it fits the opening of the uh, the uh, bump side core support really good and it slides in here and I have these uh, these deals here to hold it down but uh, I'll show you that once I have it back in I have it out right now so I can route the wires easier but uh, uh, all that is sorted out I have the uh, the uh, uh, the battery junction box that I that I wired up right here and uh, I need to shorten these wires up uh, a lot. So we ended up with a ton of wires over here. So I'm going to shorten all this up and uh, repin those plugs so all those wires are the correct length. And then all of this stuff will go in the cab. And I have uh, bulkhead connectors to do through the cab. So uh, you can unplug it at the cab and it's all nice and sealed up there. And I actually got a, uh, a, a Mustang throttle pedal. This is out of like a 2011 and up Mustang with a five liter coyote and uh, the plug for the uh, that plug looked the same as the power stroke so I thought I would give it a chance because this one mounts flat where the, uh, the power stroke one mounts at an angle and this one goes up in here and mounts flat on the firewall and it's gonna be a lot easier to uh, to mount where that power stroke one it's, it's at an, it was gonna be at an angle right here and I was gonna have to make a bracket and it was gonna be kind of flimsy unless you really beefed it up. So this is a lot better option. I did try, it, it plugs in and it works with the uh, truck before I unplugged everything, made sure it all worked. So uh, that's gonna be a good uh, a solution for that. The, the key, I would really like to put it here, um, <clears throat> but uh, the Pat's ring, which is right, this deal right here is the transmitter for the pats and it has to get the signal from the key and I don't know if it's going to work through that metal dash. It probably won't. So uh, I might either have to mount it in a different location and use the 60, uh, 72 ignition key 
or I could uh, trim this back so that patch ring is exposed so it works. Uh, we haven't got that far yet. I will uh, figure that out once I get all the wiring and stuff strung in here to the cab. Uh, speaking of the wiring, this is the <clears throat> this is the dash harness I need. So uh, not a ton of wires, so uh, that's going to be fairly easy. I am working on the BCM placement right now as well. The body control module. And that's why I have my AC box in here. This is a vintage air uh, evaporator. Uh, I just have it mounted up here so I know where everything's going to sit with that. And the BCM, I think, is going to have to live up in here, mounted on the bottom side of the dash, like so, because it's it's fairly big. And uh, <clears throat> over here, it would all be exposed and everything, so that's kind of like the only place it fits. So I'll have to, have to mount that up, but luckily, you know, the dash pad will hide any hardware or anything that's sticking up through here, so, so that's a plus. So yeah, um, I do have a few wires that have to go through the firewall on this side to go to the BCM. So those will be added. And um, here's one of my bulkhead connectors. I think I'm using this one on this side because it's smaller. It's only a six pin. Um, <clears throat> that bolts to the firewall. And then it has a plug that uh, you can plug in and out. So if you're, if you're doing anything, you can just unplug it there at the firewall and get the wiring harness out of the way. So that'll be nice and clean and neat. So... I'm gonna get going on that stuff. I ordered a new um, uh, big fuse box. I don't know what they call it. Uh, this guy, um, it's like the power, the big power distribution for the truck. Um, and this is like a Ford uh, goofy fuse thing. And it doesn't really have a good way to mount it. So I just ordered a new uh, 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 fuse box for like uh, blade fuses, I think, not blade fuses. Uh, bolt-on fuses i don't know what they call them but they're like you know 200 amp fuses 125 amp fuses so i got one of those and it's going to mount right here kind of where the voltage regulator is on a normal truck so i'm mounted here and all my power from the battery will go there and then it'll distribute to the uh the power junction box the bcm and i think the glow plug module i think that's the other place which it's going to mount down here so it'll be all right there and uh easy to get to but uh, for now, I just need to clean up all this wiring, get everything kind of routed where it needs to go and get the, the wires sorted to their final location. And then once I do that, I'll be able to loom the harness and get it all, you know, cleaned up and everything like that. But uh, uh, for now, I'm just trying to do everything I can before this thing goes to paint uh, or before I start body work on it because I'm doing the body work. But, you know, because like this inner fender here, if I would have sent it off to paint and then I cut a big hole in it for that, then you got, you know, bare metal when you're cutting up your paint and all that kind of stuff. So I'd much rather do all of this before it goes to paint. So it's all, uh, everything's painted basically. So that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get plugging at that, guys, and I'll fill you guys in when I got something else to show you. Well, guys, I've been hard at it working on the Ultimate Crew Cab, uh, knocking out a lot of this wiring stuff and getting it routed in kind of the uh, general area I want to put it. Um, I have the uh, AC box out of it right here uh, because I did mount the uh, BCM up under the dash there. Uh, I just have it mounted with some uh, self-tapping screws for now, but I'm going to uh, put a, uh, a uh, rib nut in the dash there uh, once everything's completed uh, through those holes there. So I just did that to make it easy because it's kind of hard to get the location right up under the dash. And you're limited on space, but that way I'll be able to drill them from the top and install those rib nuts pretty easy from below. And then uh, we'll get that permanently installed after we get paint. So, uh, uh, you know, this is all to get everything kind of figured out before we go to paint. Because I'm, I'm cutting holes in the firewall and that kind of stuff. So I don't want to be doing that while we have nice paint. Um, I've shortened up the harness a lot. Um, I routed things a, a bit different than the Power Stroke truck was routed. Uh, mainly this uh, big uh, cable here that feeds the BCM. I don't think it needs to be that big. This is just the factory cable. Uh, because that BCM basically doesn't do much of anything anymore. Uh, so it probably doesn't need to be that big, but uh, 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 that's just what the wire uh, goes in the plug. So that's what I used. I routed it over here because, um, for one, there's very limited space over there with the, uh, the AC box up against the firewall. It takes up pretty much all the flat area on the firewall where I could put bulkhead fittings. Um, if you can see, there's one right there. I had to move all the way. Actually, I used it's the choke cable hole. Um, since this is a that kind of gets confusing. Uh, let me explain this, or it's going to bug me. This is a 70 cab, 72 cab, and it wouldn't have that choke cable hole. 
but the whenever we replace the front dash remember I, I replaced the the dash and the floor part this is actually off the 69 cab so it has a hole right there for a choke cable so uh, later on those went away but anyway I was gonna have to fill that hole but uh, that plug fit in it with a little bit of massaging so that bulkhead plug went in there so it's uh, out of the way of the AC box over there. It's a little bit close to the exhaust. I'll show you that when we get to the, the uh, engine compartment, but I have some fixes there. Uh, same thing over here. I have uh, I have one here. I have another one to put right here, and I have a big bulkhead fitting for the, the I think this is like a four gauge wire or six gauge wire um, that goes through there. So all the, the bulkhead fittings are all going to be uh, sealed up, and uh, you're not just cutting a hole in the firewall and running a wire through it. I like that, and I can unhook them uh, right here and then they're they're uh, unhooked and uh, nice and uh, tucked away so if you're ever doing any work on the engine or anything like that you can unhook the wiring harness and uh, move, move it away from the uh, the firewall and get it out of your way so I was really happy with how that turned out uh, most of this plug right here is for the throttle pedal and uh, there's a few there for the ignition stuff uh, the, as far as the ignition goes I did get the uh, truck running with everything in here I uh, hooked the grounds up, had to kind of rig those up on the transmission because the cab's not grounded to the chassis yet. But um, I did try the ignition in the uh, the hole here. It, it fits really nice, but it will not pick up a pack signal, the passive anti-theft signal through the metal dash, unfortunately. So that won't work as is. I was kind of brainstorming some ideas. I'll probably cut out a dash out of one of my uh, donor cabs that's like junk and uh, play with this hole. And see if I can open it up and get this to work. I also thought about maybe uh, making, uh, having this piece right here 3D printed and uh, kind of molded the fit and then cutting this out so we can have kind of a uh, plastic collar that this will read the patch signal from the key through that. Um, I also thought about just opening this up and uh, just having like a, a plastic plug go in there and then cut a hole in that plug for this to stick through anyway some brainstorming ideas um, unfortunately just leaving it as is with the metal dash isn't going to work so it's either leave this tucked up under here um, somewhere and uh, I was thinking like uh, you know you have the regular ignition here that would feed power to this and then if you're you're leaving the truck uh, for an extended period or something and you want more uh, security you could reach up under the dash and pull the key out and then you have the uh, the passive anti-theft system uh, blocking all the everything from running so you can't oh, and that wasn't attached very well but then you can't uh, just bypass the 72 ignition and your your nice fancy new truck is driving out driving away but uh, we'll figure all that later you know that's that's down the road once it gets back from paint kind of a deal you got my got my uh, uh, fuel system all hooked up here uh, this is obviously not how it's going to be. We wouldn't have uh, much of a range with a uh, two-gallon fuel tank, but uh, uh, it's just up here so to to uh, get the truck running. And um, got my battery junction box right here, my, the one I wired in. I still have to shorten all these up. These wires go to these plugs here. I'm going to shorten the pins and route them up here. And then uh, once I get all that routed up, uh, I'm going to wire loom everything. So it's all nice and neat. I do have my, uh, this is my relay. It's up under the fuel pump, but this feeds a relay that is powered to all of my relays in here that then powers all of the modules. So I had to I had to rig that up the way this this uh, mod, this uh, power junction box is wired. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, uh, I, I wanted to trigger all of those off of the signal from, I think it's from the, PCM to trigger all the extra modules to come on. I think once the passive anti theft is active, and I couldn't do that the way this was wired, so I had to run one external relay that powers up all the relays in here uh, from one signal wire, and then individually the PCM can uh, trigger those on as it needs. Uh, so, but all of this is going to go through that other plug in the firewall, so that's going to be up under the dash out of the way. So, this hopefully will be a lot cleaner. Uh, than it currently is now uh, there's the uh, one of the only plugs from the uh, the power stroke that I, that I left is the uh, TCM since there most of those are staying I just left that one all the other ones I cut out so here's all those other big giant plugs we didn't need I cut all those out and uh, that's basically replaced with this plug here um, so a uh, lot cleaner than it was before for sure um, as like same earlier, I have my PCM mounted here. I mounted my glow plug module over there 
out of the way. I was going to mount it down here, but it got really cluttered here really fast. And if you notice, uh, I have, this is the, the uh, secondary water pump, I think. So I'm going to have water lines coming out of this that are pretty big. And then going through it through here, through my other secondary radiator for my intercooler. So I thought, well, that's going to be pretty cluttered. cluttered. And then I, uh, I think uh, I extended the uh, wiring harness to get that to move all the way over there. And it worked out pretty nice. And it's out of the way back over there uh, i did i did mount up my uh high voltage or high amp not voltage high amp uh, battery junction box it is to replace the ford one if i can get it open it's just a just a fuse box with some uh, higher amp fuses 125 fuses and this is all feeding all the big cables to all the stuff and uh, uh just some added protection because uh, these are the kind of cables that burn your truck down if you have a problem with those so there's a fuse on there so if anything grounds out or anything it'll pop that fuse and uh your truck will die but uh you obviously won't have any uh, electrical problems hopefully so that feeds from the directly from the battery here and then it distrib distributes that to the glow plug module the uh power junction box over there and also the uh, battery junction box over there so that's kind of sorted and uh getting kind of cleaned up I have yet to do the grounds. There's a bunch of grounds for all the harnesses. I need to clean those up and get those centralized and find places to ground those. So, so that is still underway. Right here, you can see that firewall plug I was talking about. It's pretty close to the exhaust. Um, I got some uh, heat tape that looks like this. So I'm gonna wrap it with that. And I also have some of these like plug protector things that the factory harness has. I'm gonna cut those out of another harness that I'm not using. And put those over that just to protect i think it's far enough away from this exhaust to not have any problem but uh, just wanted to give it a little bit more protection as you can see here you know all this flat space is taken up by the ac box and you can't put a plug in here so basically all the only room i had was right here and we're still going to have a plug through this for the uh the lights and everything from the 72 harness so i can't use that and then it just it was just getting really tight so and then we already had that hole there so i just used that one over there i think it'll be all right um it couldn't go up in here because it's all the cowl area. So uh, that goes to the cowl. You have to go through two, uh, you know, there's a cowl here and then the firewall's back here. So, you know, that, that gets complicated. So I think it'll work over there. I actually thought about, there's only three wires in here going to the BCM. I thought about going all the way under here and just taking it through that side of the firewall. But then uh, there's extra wires for the AC box and to run the compressor and all that kind of stuff. And I think if I have enough space, it's only a six pin plug. I only have three more wires, but if I have enough space, I can run those wires through that plug. And uh, th this style of plug, I can also expand to a bigger one if I need to. So I can pull those pins out and just put them in a bigger plug like I had over there. So kind of all the uh, the boring part. I kind of like this part, but it's, it's kind of the boring part where you're just cutting wires. It doesn't look like it did a whole lot, but I've been, this is like three or four days of work. So kind of time consuming and tedious. Um, I like uh, getting it all kind of sorted out and lined where I needed to go and, and just kind of making everything happy. That's, uh, I like the end result, you know, the, the uh, feeling of accomplishment once you get all the wiring done. Um, but we're close. Um, once I get it all sorted and, and uh, exactly where I want it and all the lengths just right, I'm gonna pull the whole harness out and then I'm gonna wrap it with, uh, uh, wire loom and I'm gonna put heat shrink on the ends or try to and you know try to really make it uh, uh, cleaned up so it's not a big mess of wires under the hood when you pop this thing I don't want to pop the hood and just look like someone threw this thing together even though that's kind of what I'm doing uh, you know ha, not really but um, I also got the uh, radiator uh, installed if you guys can see that uh, I only have one of my hold downs on here's the other hold down um, the only reason I have one on is because I only have one of these little rubber deals and I couldn't find just one of these for sale. I, you only find everything for sale on the, as far as the hold downs for a factory six liter. So I'm going to try to talk to some buddies that have some trucks and see if they could throw, send me one of these in the mail, but I only had one of those, but, uh, got the uh, radiator installed there. As you can see, it fits the opening of the, the core support really well. It only overlaps a little bit. So, uh, uh, really happy with how that is fitting. Um, I have <clears throat> the bottom half of a cage, uh, cab for the radiator mount on a uh, Super Duty truck welded to the, the uh, 72 core support to hold the bottom of the uh, radiator. And I'm also using the 6 liter fan shroud to uh, direct the air from the, uh, the 6.7 fan and it fits the hole. So, 
all that works really good i'm going to get a new one of these so it's all clean this is actually off of a different truck so um, um another thing i can tell you i'm doing i'm not going to use this this is the uh, lower intake i'm not going to use that um, and i'm just going to run the uh the intake off of here because on this one it has a bunch of extra passages and stuff and it, the intake comes in here and does a bunch of goofy stuff and then comes out here and then the, the bottom part is the intake from the turbo i am eliminating all that and simplifying it and i'm actually i was going to put the intercooler over here with the uh the factory six seven intercooler and it just didn't fit in a way that i liked it uh it was always sticking up and kind of ugly and, and, and sticking out so what i think i'm going to do it's coming today um, if I have time, I'm going to kind of set it up here and show you guys what I'm thinking. But I got an aftermarket intercooler that I'm going to put right here, a water-to-air intercooler, not air-to-air. -air. Um, I'm going to mount it right here, and we're going to run the hoses from here over to the intercooler. And then uh, my air intake will come out here like, uh, like so. And then I'm going to put the second battery over here because I was running out of room. I was going to put two batteries right here. But uh, I could not fit them with the PCM here and the radiator right here. There just wasn't enough room uh, to, to fit two Group 65 batteries, these big 65 batteries. So <clears throat> that kind of threw a wrench in my intercooler plan over here. So I'm going to put another, uh, I have the battery tray here. Um, I'm going to put the batteries on each side and use the factory 6-7 battery harness right there. And uh, have two batteries on each side and mount, try to mount the intercooler right here. I got one that fits this area. And it's rated for a thousand horsepower on a gas uh, engine uh, so it should be enough cfm for this diesel uh, diesels need a lot more cfm uh, and plus they're you know they're lower lower rpm so i think that will help the cfm uh, aspect of it but uh, just kind of went overkill just so i knew i had enough intercooler so we're not getting some uh, crazy high intake temps and then we're getting high egt's as a result of that so uh, that will be cooled by the secondary cooling system which will be this uh, the only thing the secondary system we'll be running is the intercooler and i think i'm going to keep the transmission cooler which is on the frame rail um i might uh do air to air on the transmission cooler just to keep those uh the secondary system cooler but uh, uh that secondary system will be doing that and i think the fuel cooler uh, as well runs off the secondary system so we'll get all that lined out after you know when we're doing the that doesn't need to be mocked up right now all your all your uh coolant lines but i do want to get the intercooler mounted and that kind of stuff uh, underway. So that kind of, you know, if I want to paint these tubes and stuff, we can do that before we do final assembly once this thing comes back from paint. So the game plan for this truck, um, I, this is the part I like, so I'm kind of getting carried away with this, uh, doing more than I was initially planning on. And uh, uh, it was kind of just to get the wiring all sorted um, and the holes in the firewall so then I can start on body work on this thing so I can get the paint but uh, kind of getting carried away with uh, putting all the engine and stuff together because I'm a gearhead and engine guy I like the the engine part of it so I'm um, having a little bit of fun with that so that's okay but uh, uh, pretty soon we're going to start on the body work on this thing or not on this episode we'll, we'll do another episode on the body work because I still have to buy the body tools and everything I'm to do all this all the all the uh, bondo and the primer and the blocks and the sandpaper all that kind of stuff since I've never done it before, there's a uh, uh, steep uh, purchase part of all the stuff you need to do all this stuff. And plus, I need to uh, uh, start learning on how to do it, watch videos and all that kind of stuff, and probably practice on some junk fenders and junk beds and stuff like that. But uh, we're going to see that on the channel here. So right now, I'm going to uh, knock a few more things out on the engine. Hopefully, that intercooler and stuff gets here. I'll show you that, and then uh, we'll see how that goes.
right guys well i think i have the majority of the wiring harness all sorted out on this thing under the hood um the big thing i did was uh cleaned up all the extra wire i had here at the battery junction box so uh we had a lot of uh extra wire about uh oh i say 24 inches of extra wire on all the wires that went up through here so i had to uh, clean all that up i repin the uh, connectors into the battery junction box and i also pinned them into the uh the bulkhead fittings uh through the firewall here and then uh, got the links all sorted out and kind of got the harness taped together getting it ready to relume it so uh, uh glad to have that all sorted out and uh cleaned up uh there is a few more things over here i need to work on i still haven't uh, sorted out the grounds here and consolidated those um and also i need to move the air intake temperature the the hot side air intake uh temperature from here over to here in the harness because it's going to be on this side coming out of the turbo uh to the intercooler that i'm going to put right here so uh, i have to move that out of this harness and then up here, through here uh i think the wires go this way to the pcm so it'll just be pulling those wires out of this harness and getting them up in here and then i'll set those links once i get the charge pipes made and the uh, sensor in its actual location so uh, uh just a few cleanup things like that but a majority like i said the majority of it is uh, uh all cleaned up and sorted up uh i thought i would uh bring you guys along for the uh, test fire since i did all of that wiring i have i have tested it since i did uh some of the wiring but not since i did all this battery junction box stuff here you know i always like to start it up and hear it run after i did all this stuff just so i'm not uh, uh going on to the next step and then uh, five steps down the road i try to start it and it doesn't run and i don't know which of the five steps caused it not to run so after i do a major thing with the wiring or anything with the engine that's going to cause any problems i'm going to uh uh, start it to you know make sure it still runs so i have the battery hooked up i thought i would uh, give you guys a little quick start here get the fuel pump running so it can prime if i can do this with one hand and i lost connection with my battery that's what happens when you don't have the clamps tight All right, take two. Oh, it still runs. That's good. Well, it still runs. Um, I'm going to get this battery out of here and start working on this kind of stuff. And uh, I'll catch up with you guys when I get something done. Hey guys, back on the uh, 6.7 crew cab build here. Um, I've done a few things, not a lot. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the fuel system here, I changed it up because I'm doing Hydra Boost, which is this right here. So I, I, I use this on my Ultimate High Boy as well. So I'm doing it the same way, although I'm using the uh, Power Stroke. Uh, master cylinder because uh it matches the brakes on this uh chassis so we're gonna use that master and i actually flipped it upside down because this little thing i don't know what this is but it it sticks out whenever it's the correct way with the hoses pointing up it sticks towards the engine and it was actually hitting the uh the valve cover right there so it's actually way too far in because basically the where the master is on the firewall is further inboard so it, it kind of if you can see the hole there it's pretty close to the engine so basically when this truck had a 390 in it that didn't matter because it was you know such a smaller engine but this great big diesel it gets in the way so i flipped it upside down i don't know if that matters i don't think it does the only thing i didn't like about flipping it upside down was there's this like drain hole right here which i, I guess if you had a seal blow out on the inside it would drain right there but the way it is now, that would uh, collect water, I guess. And you, I wouldn't really want that thing full of water. So uh, I might do a couple things. Uh, I might make kind of a shield for that to kind of, or a, like a breather cap kind of a thing. Or uh, uh, see what the internals are on this. I think I can take this out and there's a push rod in here. If, if so, I might just put a drain hole down here. Um, and kind of, you know, see if I can figure that system out. But that's that's down the road. Uh, uh 
we're just doing mock-up right now basically I can do that while I'm waiting on other other things uh, as far as the mounting for that goes I've done this this is how I did my ultimate uh, high boy uh, I just got a blank hydro boost plate and uh, traced out the holes there for the firewall and I'll drill these out and then uh, I'll put it on there and there's a nut that screws this on so that'll be uh, that'll screw on there I have to cut the bottom out because it's offset hole I'll cut the bottom off so it clears the uh, steering column seal. And then uh, these holes right here for the uh, the bracket there, and that bolts to the pedal assembly. So it sandwiches it all together with the firewall. Um, I think Battleborn Brakes makes a kit where it actually has standoffs, and I think it makes the pushrod length right for Super Duty Booster. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't used it, but they do have a kit. But it, makes, it stands it off about this much. And I'm just so limited on room, I couldn't uh, stand to have that extra inch and a half or whatever it stands off. So I'm using, I'm doing this way so we can mount it flush. I'll have to adjust the pushrod length, but that's uh, that's minor. I did it on my Ultimate High Boy, and the brakes on that thing work great. Uh, because of that booster there and everything's so big and it's moved further in, the uh, the factory re return line for the fuel system was in the way. This deal was right there, and see that uh, where that red cap is? It stuck out like that, and that's the return back to the fuel pump. It hit the master cylinder, and uh, this is a big hard line, and everything was crimped together, so you can't just uh, change it. You see that? It's crimped together. So what I did is I cut it off, and I used a compression fitting. Um, I think this should be pretty low pressure. For one, it's return, uh, and for two, the feed is only 100 PSI, so hopefully the return would be less. And uh, these, I looked up the fittings. They were good for like 300 and something PSI, so I'm hoping that's good. And uh, I, I adapted it to... Uh, pipe thread and then i use a and fittings for the uh the quick connect coming off of the the fuel rail so that's the fuel rail return uh and then it comes back here and this is from the fuel pump return and then we go right here that'll go down to the fuel pump so uh since i did that it's out of the way and uh, i'm going to drill holes in this and get the uh the brake booster mounted up and uh, sorted out i also had to remove the uh, crankcase filter so there's a big uh, plastic thing here i think it's right yeah, this thing, this is the crankcase vent filter. It or like filters the oil out of the uh, the oil. Um, and I have it here. I'm gonna run that down. Uh, I think I might put it back into the exhaust so we don't have fumes. Uh, we'll see. I don't think it, it shouldn't be very smoky because this engine is uh, very low miles. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I have to get an internal catch can to keep oil out of this thing. And I also might do an external catch can just to catch any other oil. So we don't have drips on this thing coming out the breather. But we'll see how that goes uh, once we get the thing running. For now, we're just doing mock-up. So I'm going to get that booster installed. But I also got some other stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I mentioned in the video that the, the intercooler I was going to put here and kind of mock everything up and show you guys. Well, that intercooler is on back order, unfortunately, so uh, it's not going to be here. I think they said June 3rd, so um, I still have several weeks of waiting for that. Um, unfortunately, I'm kind of hoping that I'll be done with this and blow this thing back apart uh, before then, but we'll see. I might start doing body work on the bed and uh, leave this all together in case that intercooler comes here, and then I can kind of sort that out before it all uh, has to go off away or get blown apart. But I did get my coolant tank, so this is let me get this set up here there this is a uh, mishimoto uh aftermarket coolant tank for a six seven power stroke and uh originally the power stroke coolant tank is plastic and it has a battery tray right there that's molded in all in one piece but this mishimoto one it is separate so uh that works great for me because then i can uh, move this around independently of the battery tray uh, and it also has uh, easy ways to mount it. So these these tabs here, I'm going to make an L bracket that belts it to the inner fender. And I'm also going to make one on the other side. And we also have just regular hose outlet on the uh, tank versus the quick connect like this. The factory hose there is. Even though it's close, it would probably work. Um, that uh, just regular hose barb outlet, I'll be able to make the hose fit perfect and cut it to length, basically. So uh, this is all going to function just like the... Uh, it would in the power stroke we got the uh, the uh, vent hose to get air out of the radiator that goes back up here and all that kind of stuff uh, one thing i don't like about it is all you have is this little sight glass to see the coolant level with the uh, factory tank you have a big uh, uh, open area that you can see the coolant really easy just you know glancing at it you just have to kind of keep an eye on your coolant level a little bit uh, a little better job of keeping an eye on your coolant level and uh, that little bitty that little bitty window is probably not much but uh 
I guess we'll hopefully you don't have to keep track of it too much. I also got my uh, cooler I'm using for my secondary uh, radiator. This is actually an oil cooler. Um, I think they call it a universal cooler, so I guess you can use it for whatever you want. Um, but it fit this hole just perfect, so that's why I'm using this one. They do have a lot of universal like heat exchangers that are actually for water to air uh, intercoolers. But they, um, I'm putting a AC condenser right here from uh, Vintage Air, and that's going to take up a lot of this space. And we we like run run out of room because the grill is like right here. So this one fit right here, really nice. So that's what I'm going to run there. Unfortunately, the bumper is right here, so uh, it's going to be blocking a lot of the air. Um, if I think it's not performing like it should, I might put a couple of electric fans here to turn on when the system gets hot, just to kind of give it some more airflow. But uh, I think it will be, uh, especially when you're going down the highway, it will get enough airflow here to, to do its job. So I'm going to run some fittings off of this down here to the, uh, the sec secondary water pump. And uh, hopefully all that will be happy and working. But uh, like I said, we'll do all that once we're doing final assembly and uh, that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I need to I need to focus on just doing the stuff I need to do now so I can get this thing uh, started on bodywork and to paint. So uh, for now, I think I'm going to try to mount that uh, master cylinder and show you guys how that goes. I might mount this thing up and show you guys. And then... I think we'll probably end the episode there and then uh, start on body work. So uh, I'm going to see what I can get mounted up and I'll show you guys how it happens. All right, well, I got the uh, brake booster and the master cylinder installed. You can see how absolutely tight it is. I did end up having to turn that fitting straight up because it was still hitting the master cylinder there. But uh, that's no big deal. I can, you know, that's just going to be a hose past that so it can go wherever. Uh, right there is where the fuel in would be, and then that's fuel return. So they're right there together. We'll run those hoses probably out here and down to the uh, fuel pump down on the frame rail. So that's no big deal. Uh, there you can see my uh, plate I put in there. So I only got two bolts in it, so there'll be two more, obviously. I'll show you the inside there in a little bit. Uh, the uh, breather is uh, limit, very limited on space. I had to turn that fitting there. Um, I might see if I can get like a 180 degree fitting, if I can run it down that way. But uh, it's uh, going to be very tight, as well as the fittings for the actual Hydro Boost are going to be very tight as well. They're down here. So uh, uh, they're going to be like, have to have some tight 90s, and then the return line right there is going to be a hose and it's pointing straight towards the valve cover, so that is going to be tight as well. But uh, overall, it's fitting. I think I can make it all work. It just, you can see how close it is there to the engine. Very close, but uh, it's all fitting, and I think I can make it all work, so that's good. And then, uh, uh, I'll show you the inside. So up in here, there's the bolts that go through the firewall, and then... Uh, the uh, nut that holds the hydro boost on and there'll, there'll be another plate in here that bolts the pedal assembly on so it sandwiches it all together uh, and that's all tied in to the uh, firewall up here even with these two bolts here so it's pretty secure like I said I have this exact same setup on my ultimate uh, high boy and it's worked great uh, that thing has fantastic brakes on it disc brakes all around and uh, these brakes are going to be even bigger so hopefully that's all going to work we have lots of room there for our brake lines and everything there um and uh putting putting clearance for that stuff just uh, limited for the hoses and stuff i know the the hoses for the hydro boost are going to be tight because uh the uh they're hydraulic hoses basically so that the ends on them are crimped on and they don't have much flex so i might have to do fittings you know to get it turned to where i need it to go then do straight uh ends on the hoses because so uh, those those if you do like a 90 on those hydraulic hoses, they are they're big basically they take up a lot of space They're not very tight. So we'll see how that goes um, Another thing I have to do that I haven't sorted out yet is a reservoir for the power steering and the hydro boost um, Right here is the power steering pump the uh, factory six sevens have just a little canister that goes right here I might see if that'll work or just get an aftermarket canister and mount right here I'm gonna have some open space in this area. So we'll see how all that works, but uh uh, I might try to sort that out before we take it all apart or not, you know, that kind of thing I can do uh, before or after pretty easily. But uh, the main thing was getting this stuff sorted because if this wasn't going to fit, I was going to have to modify the firewall where all that bolts together. And I didn't want to get into that, so I'm happy I didn't have to. But if I did, I definitely wanted to do it before we start doing uh, any paint or bodywork or anything like that. So 
everything's going together good. I'm going to see if I can get this uh, uh, degas bottle mounted up right here and show you guys, and we'll call this episode quits. So I'm going to get working on that degas bottle, getting that mounted up, and I'll show you guys once I get that done. Okay, well, I started to make the uh, mount from my degas bottle here, but uh, the uh, inner fender is hitting part of my uh, core support mount here, and it's not allowing it to sit down where it goes. You can see right there is the hole where the that one should be, so it's up just a little bit, and that modifies this angle. So see if it's tilted slightly up here. So that's going to screw up my bottle and getting it level. So I'm going to wait until I can yank this back off and fix that before I do that because it's just a simple L bracket. That won't be hard to make. I got the template already made up. but uh, So we'll do that uh, a little bit later on. Um, so we're not going to see that today, but I have been working on some other stuff. I kind of have my intake kind of sorted out. Um, I, I think I'm going to use 5 inch just because I have this filter. But then I think this filter is too big, so I'm going to get a smaller filter. So I probably could have kept the 4-inch, but uh, we'll see how things go and how it fits. But uh, getting this kind of mocked up made me realize I am not going to have enough room to get my intercooler over here. Man, it sucks because I have this big gaping hole right here. Uh, but uh, I have this 90 degrees thing, and, and I have an adapter on my turbo there. And I put that on there. And then, you know, I have to ha get this one 90 degree over. It, it was just going to look too messy, I think. Uh, we'll see how it looks. Uh, like I said, that intercooler is on back order, so I can't figure it up anyway. But my next plan was was down here, uh, right here in this spot. And then have the intercooler come up, the pipes come up through here and go to the turbo, which that would be ideal because the, uh, the outlet of the turbo is right there and pointing this way. So, I mean, it would be, it would fit right here where the factory pipe goes because this is like where the factory intercooler would sit on a Super Duty. And then this one would obviously come over this way like that. So it would look really clean. Um, the only thing we'd have to stay away from the radiator hose. I'm going to have that here. But I didn't like that idea uh, originally because up here in the wheel well, it will be susceptible to mud, dust, water, debris, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it'll be right about here. So uh i don't like the idea of cutting more holes in my inner fender to allow more dirt and debris into the engine bay because uh, i do live on uh, gravel roads and drive these trucks on uh, uh, gravel roads and sometimes those gravel roads are not uh, dry and clean sometimes it rains you know so uh having holes right here would kind of dirty up the engine bay but i thought if i do have to put it here i could build a shield around here and kind of box it in like i did the pcm uh, just to a larger extent right here and uh, that would probably make that part of me happy so we'll see what happens when i get that intercooler in and see where it fits it may not even fit here i got the bigger one because i had lots of room over there but now over here i may not have that much room so we'll see once it gets in i'm going to put the intercooler stuff on pause right now and i moved on to uh, uh steering i actually have i took it out i just realized that i had this i had the steering column in here and uh, let me pause and put the steering column back in here so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, I have the steering column in. This is actually a steering column out of a 76 um, High Boy that was an automatic, had a C6. So it is automatic um, and uh, still has the High Boy steering shaft, but it is for a dent side. So it's just slightly different, but uh, for the most part, it's the same. I have it kind of set in here. So I could figure out my lengths for my steering shafts and also so I could figure out my uh, shift linkage. I'm going to have to modify the shifter on the, the shift linkage on the end of the column there. Uh, it hits the valve cover, but I think if I tweak it, it'll clear. It's very close, but uh, uh, we'll see that when I get that part down, uh, working on that part. I have stuff ordered to do the steering linkage and the uh, shifter linkage for the transmission. I think I'm going to have to actually do a bell crank on the uh, transmission. Uh, for one, because the the motion of the shifter on the uh, on the column is opposite of what needs to happen with the shift arm on the transmission, because the the original transmission was run off a of cable, and uh, this one I'm going to use a sh uh, actual linkage. So I'm going to use a bell crank on the uh, mounted on the bell housing, and uh, it'll change the uh, motion of the shifter to the direction I need without flipping the shifter arm around. On the Ultimate uh, High Boy, that's what I did. I just took the factory arm off and flipped it upside down and put it back on. 
Um, but this one, I want to keep it kind of up out of the way because it, it gets really, it interferes with the transmission pan and I had to space it out and I didn't really like that uh, as well. So uh, I want to kind of keep it original because I want the steering link linkage to be nice and firm on this truck uh, because it has to go so far back because this is a 6R140 transmission. It's very big physical size. So uh, uh, I wanted to, you know, basically keep things is uh, without spacing them out because when you space them out, then they get loose and jiggly and that kind of stuff. So going to try to keep from doing that. I have rod ends and, and uh, uh, raw aluminum rods to connect everything and, and the, the uh, bell crank has a bearing in it. So everything should be nice and tight. Uh, I'll, the only thing I have to do is uh, machine a, a bracket to come off the bell housing, but that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys, since I got this steering column in here, a big part of this project was me finding this really nice original maroon steering wheel. And uh, I had to just put this thing in here just to see it in here. This is an original Ford steering wheel that's the, the red color and uh, it is in really nice shape. And uh, this is the color that the interiors are gonna be. The, uh, the Everything's gonna be Wimbledon white as far as the painted surfaces go. But we're gonna have uh, maroon, I'm gonna paint the steering column maroon, uh, maroon dash pad. Um, the door cards are maroon originally on this truck. I'm gonna repaint them so they look nice and fresh. We're also gonna have maroon carpet and I have uh, bucket seats that I got. If a few episodes back on the trailer, I picked up a 69 truck that had factory bucket seats. I'm going to use those bucket seats. I'm going to recover them, obviously, because they're kind of rough. But I'm going to put those bucket seats in here. So we're going to have maroon bucket seats with maroon back seat, factory bench. Uh, it's going to look really nice. I'm going to try to keep it as original looking interior as I possibly can. So uh, we're actually going to have a 69. I have an NOS 69 steel gauge bezel. So we're kind of recreating a 69 truck on this, even though it is a 72, because uh, we have a three spoke steering wheel and I'm putting the steel gauge bezel in here. But I'm going to have the uh, Dakota Digital gauges, but I'm going to keep uh, the ones that have the sweeping gauges like the original uh, so they it'll look more factory, but we'll have the ability to pull off the data from the computer with the Dakota Digital setup. We'll, we'll mess with that when I get that stuff in, but uh, really excited about the interior, you know, especially seeing this wheel here, you know, it's getting me excited about that nice, uh, the Wimbledon white with the red is going to look really nice, I think. So that really got me excited and pumped about this. Right now we're waiting on parts for all that stuff and uh, you know all the rest of the stuff I'm waiting on. So I'm gonna end this episode here so it didn't get too long. I'm probably gonna start on body work on the next episode. We'll see how that goes. I need to order a bunch of stuff, like I said earlier. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna end this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying this build. Um, I'm having a blast with it, so I'm trying to share the, the fun I'm having with you guys so you guys can get a little piece of it. If you're enjoying that, give me a thumbs up. So let, let me know. Talk about in the comments. Tell me in the, uh, in the comments what you like about this truck, what you would change, what you would do if it was yours. You know, everybody has a different opinion, so I love to hear other people's opinion and just kind of talk about trucks in the comments down below. So do that and uh, subscribe if you haven't already so you can see more of this kind of stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.